Okay, so today I am going to show you how I paint a pair of shoes, in particular a pair of high heel shoes. Um, I have my box of shoes here, this is a customer, Elizabeth, and she's wanting a pair of Rocky Horror themed shoes. This is about her sixth pair that she's had from me in about the last year. Um, she actually gets that many now that she just doesn't even bother bringing the shoes to me. She just orders them online and sends them, has them shipped straight to me. So needless to say, the postman keeps turning up with all these pair of shoes with my name on it and he's starting to wonder and ask questions that I'm not entirely comfortable with. But anyway, in our box here, we have our shoes. Now these are just sort of vinyl patent leather, whatever the hell they are. Um, that's the best type of finish to work with, is a sort of patent vinyl fake leather sort of thing. Um, silk high heel shoes, forget it. Um, it just doesn't work. You can't seal it properly. Um, when you place your paint on, whether it's airbrush paint, acrylic paint, or, or ink, silk being what it is, it's very, very absorbent material. So when you put your paint on, it actually bleeds like hell. Um, so it's, it's pointless. That's the sort of best type of thing um, to airbrush on or to hand paint on, whatever, you, whatever way you want to do it. Um, that'll be the only difference um, with what I show you today is the actual application of the paint and the sealer at the end. My paint will be getting airbrushed on, my sealer will be getting airbrushed on as well. Um, you can, you know, if you're at home, if you don't have airbrushes or compressors, you can actually just hand paint it with acrylic paints or inks, anything like that, with a normal paintbrush um, or use markers, that type of thing as well. Um, so that is going to be the only difference. The, the preparation and the sealing at the end is really the key things that you want to pay attention to. They're going to be the most important things um, as far as getting a paint job on your shoes that's going to last. Okay, so things that you will need um, for painting your shoes. First and foremost is your prep job. That's the most important thing. If your prep job isn't good, you're wasting your time painting them. Okay, so put that little bit of extra effort into it. A lot of people, um, when it comes to prepping anything, they kind of cut corners and they think, you know, I'm not going to see it, so, you know, what's the point? I can just quickly hash through it and and be done with it. Well, you don't see the foundations of your house, but they're pretty fucking important. Um, so yeah, your prep job is your paint job, so to speak. Um, first thing you will need is this here. This is wet and dry paper. This is 2000 grit paper that you see there. Um, this is specific wet and dry paper. Don't use normal sandpaper that we'd use for wood as it will rip the shit out of your shoes no matter how fine it is. Um, if that's what you want there, make sure that's what you get. Secondly, and again, depending on your design, depending on how you're doing it, if you're airbrushing it, you will definitely need this. If you're doing any kind of lettering, stencils, anything like that, you'll need this as well. It's a good quality masking tape. Um, that's something that you should always have kicking around anyway because it has lots and lots of uses. Um, if you are going down the route of hand painting your shoes rather than airbrushing, standard acrylic like what's behind me here um, will, will do perfectly fine just make sure that your layers are thin um, don't put it on too thick because it will crack um, if it's on thin enough it will be fine but standard acrylic is is perfectly fine you can also use markers such as these ones here that's a Posca marker there these are paint markers or you have Molotov markers there um, these are largely used by sort of graffiti circles um, and certain artists will use them for uh, various projects. I use these quite a lot um, for, for lots of different things so if you don't have a set it's, it's worth worth getting some um, but you can use these on your shoes as well because they're effective. That is paint that's in these, it's not ink. Um, so they're very very good, you can use them. And lastly the most important thing is this stuff here. This is media, if I can get that to focus, media textile varnish. That's what that basically is. Um, now you can brush this on with a paintbrush. You have to be quite careful because it's, as you can see there, it's very, very thin. And if you put that on a brush too heavy, it will run like hell. Um, it is best applied with an airbrush, but you can do it with a with a standard uh, paintbrush. But that's it there. You can buy this online. Um, it's about five pounds a bottle, I think. Um, I tend to buy maybe three or four at a time. Um, but that, that is what will seal your paint job at the end and reapply the gloss finish to it as well. 
So that is that is key to protecting your artwork. Without that, don't bother. So that was just the air compressor kicking in um, as it does. Still not used to that after all these years. Okay, so let's get on with the prep of your shoe. I've got a piece of our 2000 get wet and dry paper and all you're going to do is just fold it up into a piece that's manageable for you and just gently, very gently, you're not really putting any pressure on this, you're just letting the paper do it all by itself. Scuff up the area. You want to make sure you get down into these areas as well here. If you've ever done any kind of custom paintwork at all, um, on, or any kind of body work on vehicles, it's basically the same principle. You want to make sure you get everything. Because that one bit that you don't get is the one bit that will fail on you months down the line or years down the line. And you do this bit right and it will pay off. But you can see there how I'm taking the shine off there. That's what you're looking for. Just make sure you get into every nook and cranny. Now one bit I will say is where you have the point of the toe, like this here, is be extra careful with that. Because these are the areas where you can actually cut through a lot easier. Now it's quite difficult to cut through with 2000 grit which is one of the reasons I use it, but I still, just as good habit, good practice, uh, maintain extra caution in that area, because obviously if you take the surface off these shoes, you're fucked. You can't really do anything about it. You, you, there are ways you can hide it, but it just creates extra work for you. That Well, nobody likes extra work. that's the sort of thing you're looking for there it's just to get rid of all the shininess you will get sort of high points and low points and all you've got to do is just kind of push behind them with your finger just like that kind of push behind to push it up and then you can get into the material just like that there and you do the whole shoe all the way over and so just taking care not to apply too much pressure once you do this enough times, you'll know exactly how much pressure to put down and things like that, and it'll just become second nature. You'll kind of just batter through it, really. Well, that's it there. I'll crack on with these, and I'll show you them when they're done. So now that they're all prepped with your wet and dry paper, the next thing to do is degrease the material. Now, you can use uh, just cheap white turpentine substitute like that there, white spirit, whatever you want to call it um, or you can use a panel white degreaser um, I do have lots of that here because I do a lot of automotive airbrushing so I always have it on hand um, but for shoes that's plenty to take any sort of grease off them so all you do is put it on a rag and just wipe the surface down clean just let that dry off same with the other ones this is just to make sure that there's no grease on the surface I mean you will touch it as you go but this will take off the a the residue that you've left from actually sanding the shoes or scuffing them up rather so we'll take any of that residue off as you'll see there you get kind of black stuff coming off one thing I would say is if the shoes that you're, that you're uh, actually using are white um, I would use a green scotch bright pad because if you use your wet and dry paper you can get black marks on it or dark marks um, from the paper actually on the, the surface of the shoe um, unless of course you're completely changing the colour of the shoe if you're respraying it entirely then it won't matter but just again as good practice, if it's a white pair of shoes, use a scotch bright pad, a green scotch bright pad, not a red one, the red one is a bit too harsh, um, and that will see you right for your prep job. 
I'm just going to let that evaporate off and then I'm going to get on to doing um, the artwork on my plotter and I'll show you the steps of that as well. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am loading some of the images onto my computer here and these will get cut on my vinyl plotter which is basically just a machine that cuts out stencils for you um, using a sort of low tack uh, vinyl sort of masking material. Um, you can do all this by hand if you don't have the machine for it, if you don't have a vinyl plotter it, it can be done by hand, that's not a problem. Um, it's not that time consuming to do either, really, um, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing I would suggest is that you definitely have a sharp scalpel um, to cut out your letters. Um, because that's basically what you'll need to do is you would do the similar to what I'm doing here is you would take the image off of um, Google or whatever search engine you use and upload it on your computer and just print it off um, and hand cut the stencil that way. Um, I used to do that before I got a plotter, um, but you know, I, I mean, I don't use stencils all that often anyway, even with that machine. Um, I think you'd be lucky if that's turned on half a dozen times a year. Um, but for things like this, um, especially lettering, um, where I want it to be really quite precise, I, I will use a plotter for it. Um, so I'm just uploading the images now, I'll get them sized up and we'll get them cut off uh, very shortly. So I've got the plotter cutting out the letters here. Um, basically for anyone who doesn't know what this machine is, is it's a bit like a printer, but what it has is it has a blade inside the head here and that will basically I don't know if you can see it's just there where it's cutting it will basically cut out your outline so for things like letters um, you want to be really precise and do them quite fast as well um, this will cut your letters out it will cut the stencil and all you do is take the low tack vinyl here place it on your surface remove the negative parts that you don't want if the machine's actually cut out and then just airbrush your paint through that peel it off and you've got perfect lettering. Simple as that. Great piece of kit if you can justify it. This one here is a cameo oil silhouette portrait. It's about 150 to 200 pounds thereabouts. I can't remember. I've had this for a while now, um, so I don't know what I actually paid for it. But it's a very handy piece of kit. Uh, before I had this, I used to just print off the, the lettering and hand cut it and using a sharp scalpel and one of these cutting boards here, which I will say, if you're going to do any kind of hand cutting, these things are a godsend, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, but that's it, I'll just get that cut out and we'll get it placed in the shoes and start getting some paint down. Okay, so we've got our letters cut on our plotter. Um, what I'm doing here is just weeding out the pieces that I need. Uh, what I'm going to do here is create a kind of negative stencil, so I'm actually going to put the letters down, um, the actual infill and paint around that so that when I peel these off I'm going to have black lettering underneath. So I've already started on this one, and we'll just get this placed down. I'll show you the other one just to let you see, because that's been done, as you can see there. And this is just low tack vinyl, this peels straight off, and all I'm going to do is paint around that, um, kind of just splodge red paint all over it with the airbrush. And once that's dried, I can peel this vinyl off and I'll be left with the black lettering underneath so it'll be a really nice effect. I was going to do it the other way around but it's not working um, for several reasons it's just not working so I'm not going to bother I'm going to do it this way um, and it's ultimately I'm kind of glad because it's actually going to be a better paint job doing it this way so I'm going to crack on and weed all this crap out and get back to you when that's done. Okay so we've got our airbrush got our paint. Um, this is the paint that I use, is Createx Auto Air. It's a water-based paint. I do use solvents as well, um, but for shoes, I tend to use these as kind of my go-to paints. I've had them for a while now, and uh, they're very, very good. So, we'll just get some paint in here. A little drop, and then we need Reducer as well. I need to add that in. A couple of drops of that. 
we just mix this up. Gonna maybe add fuel we're mixing. And what I'll do is I'll let that sit for a couple of minutes, um, just so it takes. But that's the kind of consistency you want your paint there. If you're used to airbrushing, you'll know all this anyway, so it won't really matter. If you were doing what I'm about to do on this, is basically airbrush around these letters so that I'm left with a black background, I'm left with the letters in black. Um, if you were doing this with just a paintbrush, all you would do is put your acrylic on it and just kind of dab it around the area um, like that, and that would give you the same kind of effect. It would be a bit more of a textured effect using a paintbrush, but uh, it would give you the same effect nonetheless. Now, normally, I would do this over the area where I have the extractors um, that pull the, the fumes away, but um, obviously the noise that they make, you wouldn't hear anything I said, um, so I'm just going to do it over here at my desk, um, just to you, let you see it properly. So I've got our letters down, and again, as I said before, these could be hand cut stencils that you've just stuck down using masking tape as well, um, but I'm using this uh, plotter vinyl for it. So here we go, let's get some paint down. decided to shut up we can carry on. Now you'll notice I've just taped off some of these areas here. These are just areas I don't want to get any overspray on. That's only something you'll experience with an airbrush. If you're painting it with, with acrylic, um, with a paintbrush, you're not going to have that problem so you don't need to do it. Just adding in some runs here the blood. The one thing to remember when you're using vinyl this is to do your airbrushing in, in thin layers. Um, let, the, let them dry in between. If you're using water based it will dry pretty quick. Solvent will dry pretty quick as well. Um, it's just to save it from bleeding underneath the edges of your letters there. Just to let you see what I was talking about when I said about doing the similar effect with a paintbrush. I'll just use this brush as an example. I wouldn't use one like this, but just as an example. What you would do is you would have your lettering um, cut out and adhered to your surface. And you would just do a tiny bit of acrylic paint on it and just kind of dab all around the letters like that and that would give you a similar effect. So we'll get this finished. And 
blood runs right down the heel section here as well. And then you can look out. The design on these shoes is going to be quite basic. Um, just because I can't really find anything more intricate to do on them. Um, it's, I kind of just want it to stand out for what it is. I don't want to, I don't want to just cover it in artwork and you lose what the shoes are about. I want people to actually see these from you know a, a good a good distance away. Okay, so that's that done. I'll let this dry for a little bit and then we'll come back and remove the letters and you'll be able to see the effect that we've got. Okay, so that's our paint just about dry. I've taken one of the letters off just to test it to see what it was like. And I'll just start taking these off now. Just got to be very careful when removing them. This for me is really the kind of the most tedious bit about doing shoes when you're doing bits like this. In fact, with airbrushing in general, I kind of like to be left to just paint and be a bit freer. But when you're doing stuff like this, it's kind of you spend more time farting about cutting things and masking things than you do actually painting. I. Prime example, I recently finished a, a full-size Lightning McQueen replica car and of course it was all sort of sign writing work that was done on it and I think I spent about four days actually cutting, taping, masking and one day actually painting the bloody thing and that was a full-size car. Okay, there you go. That's your kind of effect there. Now I will go back over this and add some little bits to kind of make it look more blood spattered and interesting, as it were. But there you go. That's the type of thing you can do there, I've got a little bit of vinyl on there. Shouldn't be there. There you go. Simple as that. I'm just going to crack on and do the rest of the shoes now. Okay, so we've got the lettering done. There we go. And this will look quite dull just now until it gets the, the top coat on it. It's the inside of it there. Here. I will put some highlights in this as well, but I'll just freehand them and I don't need the letters in. So there, just got want to add some more designs to it now. Okay, so that's the artwork done. Got it all finished. It's a fairly basic paint job, it's not anything that's too intricate. Just a quick one. So the next stage is to get some of this on. This is your media top coat. Um, you can buy this online, um, there's a few places uh, that sell it. A bottle this size is about £5. Um, I tend to buy it in bulk because I go through quite a lot of it um, with the amount of shoes that I do. 
Um, this is designed to be either put on by brush or airbrush. If you are putting it on with a paintbrush, um, be very, very sparing with it because it is really thin. It will take you a while to get a proper coverage. I would reckon probably about five or six coats using a brush with an airbrush, you're usually about three or four is enough to do it because um, it gives you a much more even coverage. Um, but with, with a paintbrush, I would say about five to six should see you right and just go very, very carefully because this is really, really thin. I mean, it's like water and it, it can run like hell. Um, even with an airbrush, if you're not careful, you can you can get runs in it. Um, it's quite strong smell and stuff, so I would advise doing it either outside or if you have a respirator, certainly certainly wear it because you, you're, you're going to need it. Uh, but if you can't, if you don't have that, do it outside. Um, but just, you know, do your best not to breathe it in. So we're going to get a couple of coats of that on these and then we'll come back and have a look at them. Okay, so there we are, the finished article. Mm -hmm. So we've had about three coats of media top coat on them. So that's them fully sealed, ready to go. Okay, so I hope that helps some of you guys out um, if you want to do your own shoes. Um, it was a very basic paint job, I didn't go too much into the artwork, but the reason behind that is that the artwork is irrelevant. How you put the artwork on really doesn't matter. The prep job and how you actually seal it at the end is what's important. Um, that's one of the shoes done here. Just let you see that kind of up close. A bit better. And what I generally do is I tend to leave these overnight to fully cure. You know, although that is now set, I wouldn't say to a client, you know, come and get them now. I would leave them overnight just to fully set. Um, so that I can be confident that when they take them away, they're not going to have any problems with them. And that's the other one there. But that is basically how it's done. It really is that easy. Um, obviously if you don't have access to airbrushes, it's a little bit more fiddly, but other than that, the same principles apply. And uh, if you have any questions at all, just give me a shout below. My email address is there as well. If you have any questions, just give me a shout and I'll do my very best to answer them for you. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all later.